ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech the most truthful of words is the book of allah wa khayru al hadi hadi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we need to invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we need to invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam listen to these ayat from Surah Al-A'raf Allah he says إن الذين كذبوا بآياتنا واستكبروا عنها لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء ولا يدخلون الجنة حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياط وكذلك نجز المجرمين الله says what means verily those who belie our ayat they deny the proofs and the evidences and the lessons the signs that Allah sends and they treat them with arrogance for them the gates of jannah will not be opened and they will not enter paradise until a camel would be able to go through the eye of a needle and this is something which is impossible thus do we recompense the mujrimun the criminals and the polytheists and the sinners lahum lahum min jahannam mihad wa min fawqihim ghawash wa kadhalika najza al-zalimin allah says what means theirs will be a bed of hellfire and over them will be coverings of more hellfire thus do we recompense the zalimun the polytheists and the wrongdoers walladhina amanu wa amilu as-salihati la nukallifu nafsan illa wus'aha ulaika ashabu al-jannah hum fiha khalidun but those who believe in the oneness of Allah those who were firm on their tawhid worshiping Allah alone without any partners and they worked righteousness because iman is not just a belief in the heart or a statement of the tongue it must have works deeds righteousness actions of the limbs we tax not any person beyond his scope no one will be given a burden burden greater than they can bear such are the dwellers of paradise they will abide and live in jannah forever because it will be eternal wa naza'na ma fi sudurihim min ghillin tajri min tahtihim al anhar wa qalu alhamdulillah alladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna lanahtadi lawla an hadana allah laqad ja'at rusul rabbina bil haqq ونود ان تلكم الجنه اورثتموها بما كنتم تعملون الله says what means and we will remove from their breasts any mutual hatred or sense of injury which they had if at all in the life of this dunya rivers flowing underneath them and they will say our praise and all thanks be to Allah who guided us to this never would we have found guidance were not that Allah had guided us Indeed the messengers of our Lord did come with the truth and it will be cried out to them this is the paradise this is the jannah that you inherited you inherited it because you did the duties you believed you did righteous deeds you have inherited it for what you used to do wa nada ashabul jannah ashab an-nar 
أن قد وجدنا ما ما وعدنا ربنا حقا فهل وجد فهل وجدتم ما وعد ربكم حقا قالوا نعم قالوا نعم فأذن مؤذن بينهم النعمة الله على الظالمين الله then says what means and the dwellers of paradise those who have made it to Jannah the inhabitants of Jannah they will call out to the dwellers of the hellfire to the people who have been cast into the fire into Jahannam we have indeed found true what our Lord has promised us do you indeed find true what your Lord has promised you and they will say yes did you find it true that Allah promised you that if you do not believe or you work deeds of evil and, 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 and wrongdoing and you oppress the people, did you not, were you not promised that this would be your abode, the hellfire, if you transgress Allah's limits with those warnings? And they will say yes. Then a crier will, a crier will proclaim between them, may the curse of Allah be upon the valimun, the polytheists and the wrongdoers. الذين يصدون عن سبيل الله ويبغونها عوجا وهم بالآخرة كافرون. Those who hindered men from the path of Allah, the destination of Jahannam. Imagine when we're defending people and we say, no man, let's just let's not pray in the masjid. We'll pray here. Even these things hindering them with dunya from remembering Allah. This will be some of the characteristics of the people of the hellfire. Those who hindered men from the path of Allah and would seek to make it crooked. And they were disbelievers in the hereafter. They disbelieved in this meeting with their Lord. وَبَيْنَهُمَا حِجَابٌ وَعَلَى الْأَعْرَافِ رِجَالٌ يَعْرِفُونَ كُلًّا بِسِيمَاهُمْ وَنَادَوْا أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ لَمْ يَدْخُلُوهَا وَهُمْ يَطْمَعُونَ Allah says what means, and between them, between those inhabitants who've made it to Jannah and the inhabitants who have made it to the hellfire or been cast into the hellfire, between them will be a barrier or a screen. And on al araf al araf are like tall walls with elevated places. There will be men. What is their characteristics? Their good deeds and their evil deeds will be equal. Their scales of good deeds did not outweigh their evil. And their evil did not outweigh their good. But they were, they were similar. They were equal in weight. <clears throat> These will be the ones on an araf who would recognize all of the people of Jannah and they will recognize all of the people of the hellfire by their marks. Because the dwellers of paradise will have bright, shining, radiant faces. Whereas the faces of the people of hellfire will be ones of sadness and darkness. And they will call out to the dwellers of paradise, to those who have made it to Jannah, Salamun alaykum, peace be upon you. And at that time, the men of Al Araf will not have entered paradise, but they're going to be hoping and praying and wishing that they will be of the ones to enter it with certainty. وَإِذَا صُرِفَتْ أَبَصَارُهُمْ تِلْقَاءَ أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا مَعَ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ And when their eyes will be turned to the dwellers of the hellfire, those who went to Jahannam as their abode, they will look at them and they will say, Our Lord, please do not place us with these walimim. Do not place us with these oppressors and these wrongdoers, those who disbelieved and committed shirk, the polytheists, and those who engaged in evil. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ الْأَعْرَافِ رِجَالًا يَعْرِفُونَهُمْ بِسِيمَاهُمْ قَالُوا مَا أَغْنَى عَنْكُمْ جَمَعَكُمْ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ and the men of on Al Araf. Again, these elevated places, not having entered Jannah, not having been cast into the hellfire, but between them, this barrier where they can see the people of Jannah, they can see the people of the hellfire. When they see, <clears throat> when the people of Al Araf, they will call upon the men whom they would recognize by their marks, saying, Of what benefit to you were your great numbers? Of what benefit to you was what you used to do in this life? Of what benefit to you was all the wealth you used to hoard and chase? Where does it come to benefit you on this day if you have entered the fire? And your arrogance against faith. Because this arrogance against faith, this is batr al-haq wa ghamt al-nas. This is looking down on the people who have become faithful. Looking down on the people who go to the masajid, who implement the Qur'an, who implement the sunnah, who try to live by the Prophet wasallam. The arrogant ones, they look down at, they mock, they may say they're Muslim themselves, but they'll mock their brothers and sisters in Islam for following the deen. And they deny the truth. 
They close their ears when they hear, when they're being told the hadith to bring them proof and evidence of how they should live their life. These people, they will be looked down upon by the people of Al-Araf and say, of what benefit to you were your great numbers, your hordes of wealth, your arrogance against faith. Mocking and ridiculing, making fun of, looking down on those who try to implement the deen of Allah. أَهَاؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ أَقْسَمْتُمْ لَا يَنَالُهُمَ اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةِ أُدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ تَحْزَنُونَ Are they those of whom you swore that Allah would never show them mercy? Or you used to laugh at them when they would say, we're doing these good deeds in this dunya so we can make it to Jannah, so we can make it to paradise. Behold, it will be said to them, enter paradise, no fear shall be on you, nor shall you grieve. Nor shall you grieve. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ أَفِيدُوا عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمُهَا, حرمها عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ And the dwellers of the hellfire, they will look up to the people of Jannah, and they will say to them, send down, pour us, pour upon us some water or anything that will help alleviate this punishment that we are undertaking, that Allah has provided you with. Pour on us something that Allah has provided you with to help ease our situation. But the people of Jannah will say to the people of the hellfire, they will say both water and provision, Allah has pr- prohibited for us to send upon you today, upon the disbelievers. الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَهُوًا وَلَعِبًا وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا وَمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ Who are these people? The people of the hellfire. They are the ones who took their religion as play and amusement. They took their religion not for seriousness. They took it for granted. They took deen as something just on the side. They took deen as something that wasn't serious. They mocked it, they played with it, they twisted it, they contorted it. It was plenty of amusement for them. It wasn't something that they truly believed in and truly aimed to yani, please with respect to their Creator. And the life of the world deceived them. It deceived them that all your marbles belong in this life because you have no other life worth living. And this was the deception that this, this is the deception that shaitan gives to this dunya. That we think this is the life that we will have to live only. So this day, Allah says, what means this day, we shall forget them as they forgot their meaning of this day. We will forget them because they forgot that they would meet Allah and come to this destination. And as they used to reject our ayat. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I want us to reflect on this. I want us to reflect on these ayat, how our great Lord, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, the one who deserves to be worshipped, and the one who deserves to be feared, how He's given us so many opportunities to make it to Jannah, so many proofs and evidences and signs that He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. So many proofs and evidences and signs that this life isn't forever, that it is only temporary. So much has our our Lord, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, given us opportunities to make our scales heavy but how we choose to not take advantage of those things. And they're easy things. They're things that just cause you to move your tongue in a way where you praise and you glorify Allah. And yet your scales from just those things can become heavy. We choose not to take advantage of them. And we must ask, how can a Muslim, upon Tawheed, knowing the truth, having the Qur'an as his guide and the sunnah of the best of mankind, as the sunnah for him to follow, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet he may end up with his good deeds and his bad deeds being equal. Because that's not something we should aim for. We should aim for scales that are heavy on the good side and light on the bad side. When Allah has given us so much to do to save ourselves, to make our scales heavy, but we've decided that other things are more important. Allah, He said, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Allah says what means but whoever turns away from my reminder, whoever turns away from the Qur'an, whoever turns away from remembering me in the mornings and in the evenings, in times of good, in times of bad, whoever turns away from my reminder. They don't believe in the Qur'an, they don't act upon the Qur'an. And with this always is the implementation of the Sunnah. 
Verily for him is a life of hardship. And will raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. He will say, My Lord, how is it that you've raised me up to be blind? But in the life, in the dunya, I could see I wasn't blind. Allah will say like this, our ayat, our proofs, our evidences, they came unto you, but you disregarded them, you left them off, you didn't believe in them, you didn't think deeply about them, you turned away from them, so this day you will be neglected and put into the hellfire away from Allah's mercy. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we don't want to be in that situation. So look at some of the things, very simple. You may do, we get lazy with sometimes. We need the reminders. Remind one another because reminding benefits the believers. Look at these things just compiled for us to look at to make our scales heavy. That Allah has given us as gifts, as gifts with how much we sin. He's given us so many ways to make our scales heavy with goodness. Ibad Allah, look at some of these things and their rewards. To make the scales heavy, earning Allah's forgiveness and His reward. An Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, قال فردت على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ليلة أسرية به الصلوات خمسين ثم نقصت حتى جعلت خمسا ثم نودي يا محمد إنه لا يبدل القول لدي وإن لك بهذه الخمس خمسين. This hadith which is Sahih in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi. From Anas ibn Malik, he narrates that on the night of Isra, the Isra and Mi'raj, 50 prayers were made obligatory upon the Prophet ﷺ and this Ummah. Then it was decreased until it was made to be five. And then it was called out, O Muhammad ﷺ, indeed my word does not change. These are five prayers for you to do, but you'll get the reward of 50. So imagine this Rahmah, just built into what we owe Allah as a duty. Of the, fat, the recitation of the Fatiha, and turning to the Qibla, and facing him in prayer, and making ruku, and making sujood. And yet Allah, He still multiplies it to make our scales heavy. So that one prayer we pray, Allah multiplies it by ten. You think it's worth skipping a prayer now? When you could be on an area, you could go to Jahannam, or you could even be where your good deeds and your bad deeds are evil, when Allah gave you the salah to make your good scales heavy. عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه قال تفضل تفضلها ب 27 درجة. He said regarding the prayer in jama'a in congregation in the masjid. He said the reward of the congregational prayer is 27 times greater than that of the prayer offered by the person alone. So you can get 20 side 27 times greatness in terms of the reward Allah will give you for your salah when you do it in the masjid. You still think it's worth it to miss a masjid, a prayer here? You have enough good deeds to make your scales heavy? You don't have enough sins to make your, your scale of sins yeah, I mean, heavier than your, your, your scale of, of good deeds? Then abandon the masjid. These are all things, gifts, gifts, presents from Allah, blessings from Allah for us to make our scales of good deeds heavy and to make it to Jannah. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن ربكم يقول كل حسنة بعشر أمثالها إلى سبعمائة ضعف والصوم لي وأنا أجزي به والصوم جنة من النار أبو هريرة he narrates that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم says that Allah عز وجل said so this is a hadith Qudsi a statement of Allah that we find in the hadith and it is صحيح in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi Allah عز وجل he says Indeed, your Lord said, or Allah says, every good deed is rewarded with 10 times up to 700 times. Every good you do, even if it's helping an elderly person just move their groceries from the cart to a car. Every good deed you do, Allah will multiply it by 10 up to 700. So it may be one deed in your eyes, but to Allah, He'll give it the weight of 10 or up to 700. Illa siyam, except for fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لِي It is for me. وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Allah says, I will reward to it as much as I want. You can get rewarded to it maybe times 7,000. This fasting that we find so difficult to do. I remind myself first, outside of the month of Ramadan and in the month of Ramadan. 
In the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, we find energy outside of it, we tend to lose it. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, fasting in the winter is an easy reward. Al-Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he said, fast in the winter and pray at its nights. Why? Because its nights are long and its days are short. So we got the winter coming up where there'll be long nights, short days. Try to fast some of these days. Allah will give you a multiplication on that reward and put it, make it heavy on your scales. Yawm al-Qiyamah bi'ibn Allahi ta'ala. An Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu anhu, qala qala Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, خلتان لا يحسيهما رجل مسلم مسلم إلا دخل الجنة وهما يسير ومن يعمل بهما قليل قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلوات الخمس يسبح أحدكم في ضبر كل صلاته عشرة ويحمد عشرة ويكبر عشرة فهي خمسون ومئة في اللسان وألف وخمسمائة في الميزان وأنا رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعقدهن بيده وإذا أوى أحدكم إلى فراشه أو مرجعه سبح ثلاثا وثلاثين وحمد ثلاثا وثلاثين وكبر أربعا وثلاثين فهي مئة على اللسان وألف في الميزان قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فأيكم فأيكم يعمل في كل يوم وليلة ألفين 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 وخمسمائة سيئة قيل يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكيف لا تحسيهما فقال إن الشيطان يأتي أحدكم وهو في صلاته فيقول أذكر كذا وكذا أذكر كذا وكذا ويأتيه عند منامه فينيمه This hadith which we find authentic in the sunnah of النساء is greater as حسن Listen to it because for all of us who pray and just always have to rush to get somewhere, look at what Allah is asking of you and what He'll give you of scales, of scales of good deeds if you do them. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said there are two qualities. No Muslim person attains them but he'll enter Jannah. And they are easy, but many of the people don't do it. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said there are five daily prayers. After each daily prayer, say subhanAllah ten times. Alhamdulillah, ten times. Allahu Akbar, ten times. This is valid in the sunnah. But don't get up before you do it. Just say these while you're still sitting, where you pray. Say them ten times. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, this will make 150 on your tongue. But Allah will give you 1,500 on your balance, on your scales. And I saw the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, counting his adhkar and tasbih with his hands, with his right hand. So this is how we should count our tasbih and our takbir, and our tahleel, and all those things. Use your hands, stick to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And then he said, ﷺ, and when one of you retires to his bed, let him say, SubhanAllah, 33 times. While laying in his bed, let him say, SubhanAllah, 33 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Allahu Akbar, 34 times. This is 100 on the tongue, 1,000 on the scales. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, so which of you does 2,000 500 bad deeds in a day and a night. So one of the companions, he asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, how can a person not persist in doing that? This is easy. It takes what? Less than a minute after every prayer. And in the night, when you're already laying in your bed, it will take you maybe two minutes. How can someone persist in not doing that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Shaitan comes to you when you're in your prayer. And he says, remember such and such, remember such and such. Wanting us to just get up when the salah is done and leave and not remember Allah. And shaitan, he comes to you when you're in your bed, making you tired and exhausted and makes you sleep. A man from Banu Sulaim, he came to the Prophet ﷺ. <coughs> and uh, a man, عفواً, عن رجل من بني سليم قال عدهن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في يدي أو في يده التسبيح نصف الميزان والحمد لله والحمد يملأه والتكبير يملأ ما بين السماء والأرض والصوم نصف الصبر والطهور نصف الإيمان رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث حسن the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم this man from Banu Sulaim he narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم counted them in his hand or on his own hand saying تسبيح saying سبحان الله is it fills it's half of the scale 
And Alhamdulillah, our praise be to Allah, fills the scale. And the takbir, saying Allahu Akbar, fills what is between the heavens and the earth. And fasting is half of patience, and purification is half of faith. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, remember Allah so that He remembers you. Remember Allah at all times to make your scales of good deeds heavy so you do not enter the hellfire. And so you're not even on the level of the Al-A'raf, those whose good deeds and bad deeds are equal. So the time is delayed from entering Jannah. May Allah make us of those who enter Jannah. أقول قلي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم أبو الله يغفر لكم ذنوب إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ما دير brothers and sisters in Islam there's a group of people who will be on Al-A'raf, these elevated walls with elevated high places. And they will be between the people of Jannah and the people of Hellfire, waiting to enter Jannah with Allah's mercy. But what got them there was that their good deeds didn't outweigh their bad deeds, and their bad deeds didn't outweigh their good deeds, they were equal. And for us, Allah has given us so many things to just say that don't even take time away from our life. And yet, we ditch them and we don't do them. And these are things that could easily make our scales heavy. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu قال أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قال لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لهم ملك ولهم حمده على كل شيء قدير في يوم النئة مرة كانت له عدل عشر رقاب وكتب له مئة حسنة ومحيت عنه مئة سيئة وكانت له حرزا من الشيطان يومه ذلك حتى يمسي ولم يأتي أحد بأفضل مما جاء به إلا رجل عمل أكثر منه. This hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet صلى الله عليه said, whoever says لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك له الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Whoever says it a hundred times in a day, and according to the ulama, this doesn't have to be at one time. You could do 20 with, you know, in the morning when you're driving, 20 at lunchtime, whatever it means. You get to 100 in the day. Listen to the reward. <clears throat> Whoever says it 100 times in the day, they will get the reward for freeing 10 slaves. And they will get 100 hasanat, they will get 100 good deeds put on their scales. And they will get 100 sins removed from their level, their accounts of bad deeds. And... It will be said, this saying will be a shield for him from shaitan until, on that day, until the night. And nobody will be able to do a better deed than this person except the one who has done this more, who has said more than that hundred times. Very easy things to do. Wet your tongues with the remembrance of Allah, you will make your scales heavy. Do not be in a position where your good deeds and your bad deeds are equal. When Allah has given us so many things to just say, to praise Him and glorify Him and thank Him, and extol tawheed, and we don't and, and, and we don't take advantage of it. Abu Huraira he narrates that the Prophet he said kalimatan khafifatan ala lisan, thaqilatan fil mizan, habibatan ila rahman. Subhanallah wa alhamdulillah. Subhanallah alazim. The Prophet he said the authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. There are two expressions: light on the tongue, heavy on the scales. Very beloved and dear to Allah Azza wa Jal, the compassionate one. They are subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Glory and praise be to Allah. Glory and uh, perfection be to Allah. And I begin with praise of Him. And glory be to Allah, the incomparably great. These two phrases, heavy on the scales, love to Allah. <coughs> very light on the tongue, very easy to say. Subhanallah al azim wa subhanallah wa bihamdihi. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قال سبحان الله وبحمده في يوم مئة مرة حطت خطاياه وإن كانت مثل زبد البحر رواه البخاري أن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يسأل ما أنت الحديث هو أبر سيد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله وبحمده three times very easy on the tongue very easy to say 
One of those phrases, love to Allah and heavy on the scales. Whoever says it a hundred times in the day, the Prophet Sallallahu said, he will be forgiven, all of his sins will be forgiven, even if he came with sins, the amount of the foam of the ocean. The amount of the foam of the ocean. And Abu Darda radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, nothing is heavier on your scales of good deeds, yawm al-qiyamah, other than husn al-khuluq, other than good character and good manners. We belittle these things. We ignore them. We let a rudimentary behavior become our way. And you're losing out on good deeds. To make your scales of good deeds heavy on that day where the deeds, all of them, will be weighed. And our destination in the era, in the akhirah will be told to us. Abu Wahab, he narrates that Abdullah bin Mubarak, <clears throat> he said, أَنَّهُ وَصَفَ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ فَقَالَ هُوَ بَصْقُ الْوَجْهِ وَبَذْلُ الْمَعْرُوفِ وَكَفْقُ الْأَذَىٰ Abdullah bin al-Mubarak rahimahullah, he explained good character saying, it is a smiling face. It's doing one's best in good deeds, trying to do as much good deeds. First and foremost, spreading tawheed and all of the good actions and refraining from harm. Refraining from harming people. This is good character. It is the heaviest things on those scales of good deeds. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Always seek to do good. Wet your tongue with the remembrance of Allah. Because all of these phrases that we've been blessed with, and Allah has given us the ability to say, and made them light on our tongue and easy to say, these are all things to make your scales heavy. So that none of us, nor our loved ones, have to worry about our good deeds and our bad deeds being equal. And we ask Allah to make our good deeds so heavy that we are living to Jannah without having to wait. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثابت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثابت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثابت قلوبا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين